24,000 men are ready to fight and die for your entertainment. Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome to another epic medieval 1212 online battle. Today we have a humongous 24,000 man engagement in this 2 vs 2 and oh my god, it is going to be one hell of a battle. So let's stick it on slow-mo really quickly whilst we take a look at the factions and what they are bringing. So over on the yellow slash blue side we have an army of Venice they are coming together with their brave brave allies which we can see right here and they are going to be the Portuguese so some heavy Portuguese knights with these awesome heart shaped shields obviously that's just a reminder to hit that like button if you are enjoying these medieval 12-12 battles but for the forces of Venice over on this far left hand side you have some of their heavy spearmen with these huge ass spears they're going to be supported by some more of the these halberdier infantry very very potent men who are very very deadly then behind that we also have some of these heavy heavy venetian knights with huge war hammers and you know great armor piercing weapons as we go to the main contingent of the venetian army they're going to be supported again by some heavy spearmen behind them a whole line of pavise crossbows you can output a crazy amount of damage and then finally in reserve they again have these heavy uh, foot infantry from Venice with the Warhammers who can just break apart to the enemy armor. We also have a small contingent of Doge's bodyguard. I think there's only one of two horses that Venice have brought. No, they brought four knights, which is very smart because cavalry in this mod is just invaluable. Then if we take a quick, quick look at the Portuguese on their front line, they have, they're going with some of their Pavese crossbowmen. I think these are Genoan mercenaries. They are indeed Genoan Pavese mercenaries. And I think also over on this side, we also have a mercenary company no they're they're normal crossbows maybe on the spanish side yeah on the spanish side we actually have you know genoa mercenaries as well so it seems like genoa are playing both parts in this battle which i think is pretty goddamn dope and as you go further back we also have you know again more heavy spears from the portuguese they're going to be kind of acting up as like the the, the, the central line that just holds the enemy at bay. And then we also have dismounted Portuguese knights, obviously going to be a very, very strong unit. And then finally in reserve, they do have their Spanish order of, uh, what are they called? Or Spanish order foot knights of the late period. I love these guys right here. Whew, looks pretty goddamn cool indeed. Um, and then obviously on their flanks, they're going to have a very, very similar setup, some crossbows. We have some Portuguese knights, some Portuguese nobles. That's pretty cool. Then over on the other side, we do have an army of Castilian soldiers. Again, they're going to have some of their spearmen of the late period on these flanks. As we go further back, we have some of their javelin men, obviously the Spanish or the Castilians, known quite heavily for their javelins, for bringing them. We also have some Moorish raiders, which is really cool in Castile's roster, but they have kind of some, you know, Muslim units as well, which kind of just adds more diversity to them. Obviously, the Spanish at this time period being very, very contested or the Iberian Peninsula, I should say. Then we also have some more heavy infantry there. On their front line, we have, again, some Spanish knights in reserve back there. We've got the Genoese crossbowmen, who are, again, playing both sides. And then, finally, we have these kind of conquistador-looking units. Very, very nice indeed. And that's going to be kind of be their main front line. And we also have some of these dismounted halberds back here. Are these just... No, these are actually sword infantry, and they're hiding. Very interesting. So they're going to keep six units of their elite infantry all the way in the back. Back, basically just hidden from view then quickly taking a look as we do have a small spanish order knights and pushing forward uh, on the forces of toulouse this is toulouse right i'm pretty sure it's toulouse um again we can see their spearmen on their front line or some heavy knights back here knights perfect very very cool indeed i love their black armor pretty unique and we also have the dismounted variants as well back here the foot knight oh they are amazing that looks really dope right there very very nice indeed so it's going to kind of make up there they have a lot of these heavy knights back here well, that's a very deadly line however these guys are vulnerable to chris crossbow fire so that might occur i'm gonna click on play whilst we just look at the last little flank right now as we do have some of the uh, spearmen of toulouse again i really love the toulouse i'm pretty sure this is toulouse but i really love their like aesthetic for their helmets and stuff they look really really cool I dig that quite a lot, um, and especially their knights back here. They just they just stand out so much, uh, which is really nice. 
yeah, very, very cool unit. And as you can see, obviously, the entire battle lasts the entire battlefield. You can see the red line right there and the red line right there. So this battlefield, there is no space for flanking whatsoever, which is something I really think is cool because what it basically allows you to do is it allows you to, or it forces you to have to use your cavalry in unique and interesting ways because you can no longer use it on the flanks to have that little engagement. You have to try and find gaps in the enemy line you know, throughout the entire battle. Uh, the battle which is being fought and try and you know, weave your cavalry in, try and hit the enemy front lines when they're not kind of expecting you, which just makes I think for a really interesting battle rather than just always having cavalry on the flanks. You kind of institute it in your line. As you can see right here, we have some of uh, the detachments of the Castilian and the Talusian cavalry here just going to be, you know, in, almost in the center of the battle line and that's going to be met by the Portuguese and also the Venetian cavalry as well they're going to kind of you know meet up against them and get ready to fight so we actually do have a bit of a missile off right now the Pavis, the Genoan mercenaries from both sides are now exchanging blows with one another which is really cool it'd be really awesome as well if in, in the 1212 campaign you could set up like you know mercenary companies or something where you could just sell your men to other factions that would be really cool like Condossieri in EU4 but both sides are going to be exchanging it. Also, we have music on, right? Why is the music not going on? We'll just do that and then turn it back on again. We want to have some music. If not, I'll just put someone in the background. So the Genuine, I think these guys want to get away from their front line because, you know, a bit of, you know, friendly fire is going in on the back of these guys. Whereas uh, these dudes are in loose formation. So the Portuguese right now are definitely going to be having the better set of mercenaries because, you know, these guys are in loose formation. Now, I think they shoot a little bit slower in loose formation, but they're going to be taking a lot less damage. Um, obviously, whereas when they exchange their blows over on the other side, these uh, these Genoan crossbows for steel are obviously a lot more condensed. So the arrows or the crossbow bolts, we have to find their mark a lot easier in these guys even though it seems like they're kind of struggling i don't know i see like there's hardly not there's not many of these guys going down over on the other side as well again we're having this crossbow off this time though the crossbows of venice i mean it's not like you know venice really need much support in their crossbow department they have very 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 nice crossbows so we're not gonna have to hire out any other italian mercenaries this time and these guys are going for a very interesting strategy where they use their crossbows in contingent with their shield rules to offer them a bit more protection. Doesn't look like the Talesian or the, I guess the, the Talese is France, obviously. Is it considered fr French at this time period? Um, or is it like a different culture? Because um, obviously it hasn't really been integrated, you know, as being its own uh, count and stuff or duke. Duke dumb. I should say. Um, so yeah, they're obviously not going to be having the, the strongest crossbows in the world, but they're going to be doing okay, exchanging blows at least, and obviously using their infantry really well. One of the things I think that the Portuguese player must not, or the Venetian player must not do, is he cannot, he cannot go ahead and waste all his ammunition because there's so many foot knights in the background right now, waiting for their time just to get stuck in against the Venetians and cut them down. They need to save their crossbows to try and focus these guys down. So it might be a good idea just to give up on this missile engagement and just charge forward your infantry and just try and get stuck in using your crossbows effectively. Again, I really love how the cavalry is formed up here as well, facing off, you know, look how close they are. They are, you know, just distance away, literally so, so goddamn close. And this is, I guess, the match. You know, one of the really interesting things you can do, and I'm just about to say that, is you can push your cavalry to scare off the enemy crossbows really, really nicely right here. You know, just push them across. And I imagine the uh, Spanish Order Knights need to go ahead and commit to this, but they're way too late. And I think they're going to get a great charge off. How has no one seen this? Oh, wow. I mean, this is one of the best miscommunications in these battles. But again, this is a really effective thing to do, is just run your cavalry down the line. Because what this does is it forces the enemy crossbows back. It forces them to turn their backs on the oncoming crossbow fire, uh, you know, causing them a lot of heavy casualty. And right now, the, the Portuguese cavalry is just going to charge in, taking a crossbow bolt, and just fly into the enemy shield wall. Now, obviously, that's not going to be doing great as that guy just gets flung to his death. And they're just going to break through the shield wall. The line was far too thin, and these heavy knights are just going to be running havoc in the background. Where are the Castilian cavalry? Where are the cavalry from Talese? The Portuguese making huge impacts right now on this battle line. And if they can take out a huge portion of this, you know, crossbows right now, that's going to give them a crazy advantage. Yeah, look at that. These guys just not standing. Their lines are far too thin. 
to withstand a cavalry charge like that. Finally, the Castilian cavalry are coming in, but they also managed to get a rear charge off on this infantry. This is just ca catastrophic for uh, Castile right now. And what they need to be doing is they need to be pushing their advantage across their entire battle line. Wow, that was just insane for the infantry. But for one cavalry, I mean, now the Castilians, though, are going to, oh, the, the Toulouse Knights are going to come in and do exactly the same. This is just, you know, crazy miscommunication on the front line. Look at that as the Toulouse Knights come flying in. They're going to be supported by an infantry unit that can actually hold the front line. And that's going to be the Pavese Spearmen who are going to send the Toulouse Knights packing. But, I mean, that was a great counter charge and reaction to that battle. Definitely very, very nice. And that's why I love these huge battles because it's so hard to keep track of the entire battle. I mean, just look at it. It goes off into the goddamn distance. So every single maneuver, every single, you know, positioning really does matter. And that was a very, very good uh, exchange for the Castilian, uh, for the Portuguese cavalry right there. Killing plenty of infantry as well as a lot of other stuff. And unfortunately, I think this Toulouse Knights just doesn't really have much else to do. They're going to be charging into the spears, being countercharged by the Portuguese cavalry. Unfortunately, I think these Toulouse uh, dudes are going to go down. I think as well, these guys are getting picked off by the Moorish archers, which is pretty nice. The Moorian archers obviously having a lot longer range. Uh, just not really getting the armor piercing they need, but it's a good unit to go ahead and pick away, uh, you know, at, at range. Only taking out five of these guys. So maybe not. Uh, they're starting to, starting to pick up a few kills now as the infantry line does clash up. I think Castile have been taunted forward by that initial engagement. And this is always one of the really cool things that happens in these big battles is you, you intend... Oh, that's a really good throw as well by the Portuguese spearmen. Killing a bunch of these guys. Wow, the Portuguese, man. These javelin throws. Oh, they're throwing like mini darts. I guess really good armor piercing darts. That's not bad at all. They're going to obviously get their, their javelin throw back, exchanging these blows with one another. But, I mean, the Portuguese just seem to be getting the upper hand of every one of these engagements right now. That looks pretty awesome. And here we go, they're going to come charging in. As you can just see the entire Castilian army moving in the background. Now what should really be happening is the Castilians, yeah, they're doing exactly what I was about to suggest to start hitting these halberds. Because the halberds are very deadly if not met with other halberds. Obviously, they're, they're extremely vulnerable to missile fire. So you can see that, you know, immediately the Morian archers are just changing their, or Moorish archers, are just changing their focus onto killing them halberds because they're just such a great, great uh, target to try and take down. This will also be a, a fairly interesting engagement. We're actually going to be getting a cavalry fight in the center as well. What is this? Oh, we're going to be getting another charge off on the Genoese mercenaries. It looks like it was pretty successful as the Spanish Order cavalry runs away. However, the Venetian uh, horses are also in hot pursuit. However, I think the Castilian cavalry is less armored, so it's going to be getting away, even though it's going to be taking some crossbow fire as it does try and retreat. So plenty skirmishes at the moment on every single side of the battle but right now the small little engagement over here looks like it's going to be going in favor of the portuguese however however this could have been all a ploy to bring forward the halberds of the portuguese because they've taken a lot of casualties in this fight so you know maybe this was just all a plan also i feel like this cavalry is getting really far out but oh my god look at that yeah the uh the spanish order knights have just broken through a gap in the line and now they're going to be you know hitting into the sword infantry some of the dismount dismounted portuguese nobles however the portuguese nobles are going to be winning this fight and again throwing them back we're going to be seeing fireworks and there we go the venetian battle line is ready to engage against the men of toulouse they're, they're kind of the, the toulousians need to do something along with the castilian allies because you know every single step of this battle is going kind of in favor of the venetian portuguese alliance so they've decided that you know they need to make their move they need to push forward their men and this is the result of it they're forming shield war and advancing. Oh, wow. Look at how awesome that looks, man. Hold the line. The Venetians calling out as the Toulousean battle line gets closer and closer to engaging almost, you know, within touching distance of their spears right now, chanting and screaming at one another. Listen to that as we just go down the battle line. Oh my god, look at that, it's awesome. I want to see, these guys are basically touching one another. Wow, as we have a small engagement round here. I mean, just look at that, though. The spearmen of both sides 
crossing tips right now. And you can even see the Spanish in the background there. Truly epic. But we do have a major engagement right here between the Venetians and Toulouse. Toulouse have thrown in a lot of their heavy you know, two-handed knight units. Who are receiving a bit of missile fire. They also have some of their halberds back there. Both the halberds is facing off. Not wanting to commit to a fight way too quickly. As well as that we're going to have a huge fight right now. As the cavalry just basically dictating this battlefield. As we have another unit of Portuguese horsemen. Breaking through the Spanish line. And cutting down the Genoese mercenaries. Who obviously picked the wrong side this battle. I mean the balance of power is in favour of Toulouse right now. As both sides are losing men dramatically. Um, even though only a thousand men, basically two thousand men from each side have really gone down so far, which is pretty crazy. As we just wait, this is all cavalry right now, and there we have the huge engagement of the Toulousian battle line as more reinforcements come up. Wow! Just look at that battle line just spreads off into the distance right now. That is absolutely crazy cool. And both these sides are going to be fighting. I think to lose, though, they're definitely going to come out on top in this engagement, though. Like, straight up, just solely because they have a lot more of the foot knights. However, if over on the Portuguese side they can find some gaps in, then they definitely can. I mean, look how organized the Toulousean battle line is against Venice compared to the battle line of the Spanish. It's so much more messy, um, however, really cool. And I'm going to go a little bit on slow-mo because obviously these battle lines are clashing extremely hard and I want to make sure that we catch all the action um, and all the uh, breaking. So if you guys want to see more battles like this, be sure to drop a like and a comment on the video and let me know what factions you want to see. There's like 70 something factions in uh, in medieval 1212 so there's a whole range of different factions that we can play combinations of alliances being broken and you know maybe scenario battles as well we could try and create so do let me know in the comments down below what you want to see. And also, if you want to be a part of some of these battles, we host weekly battles over on the Discord. So if you guys want to be a part of them, join my Discord. Link will be down below in the description. And you can be a part of these cool battles. And the good thing is you don't necessarily need the best computer in the world because a lot of them are just sent to me like this in a replay form. The Moorish archers, after their, their perfect, they did everything they could in this battle. Used all their ammunition and now they're being charged in as a sacrificial lamb against the Portuguese. Oh, poor, poor, poor soldiers. Though, to be fair, though, archers in this mod, the more expensive archers you get, the better infantry fighters they are. So you can actually rely on some archers being pretty good if you go ahead and invest in the head, more heavily armoured ones. And they'll do their job. Really nice move here by Toulouse, breaking their cavalry through this battle line, which is exactly what I said needed to happen in these battles which go to the red line. They're going to be getting a great rear charge off onto the spearmen of the, Vene of the uh, Venetians. However, the Venetian cavalry is going to come flying in as well, looking to execute that. Uh, that unit and really break down uh, break up their formation break them down as the fighting does continue hard and fast right now so many men fighting also shout out to the performance considering how many men we have like we've got like 24,000 men and it's a little bit jumpy here and there but 24,000 men in the tiller which is notorious for its poor optimi optimization not bad not bad whatsoever again just look at that oh. It's crazy. So it looks like the crossbows of the of they've been recent. Have they just brought more crossbows the Toulouse men? I think they have. Yeah, they brought more crossbows, which is obviously really helping them out. Um, but we're getting a lot of these foot knights who are being you know smashed upon, hit hard. We have the Venetians as well. I always love this Venetian unit. It looks so goddamn cool. Hard fighting on both sides. And it's really hard to tell who's going to come out on top of this battle. I feel like the Portuguese are doing a great job at breaking the lines. But it does seem like a lot of the cavalry coming in. And now the Spanish have brought up their elite soldiers. They've thrown in their reserves. This is it. Make or break for Castile. They're going to be charging in these heavy two-handed knights. 
We're just going to have a field day with these Portuguese spears, which are just not going to be able to match up. And they're throwing in men from every single side of this battle. However, we do have the Portuguese breaking in the center and throwing their men forward to hit a lot of these missiles. But the Castilian cavalry is coming in. Where is the cavalry for Portugal now? I feel like they're kind of, you know, missing out somewhere. Where are they? Oh, they're looking to take advantage and support their Venetian. I know this is the Venetian cavalry. So where is the Portuguese cavalry right now? I can't see it. It looks like Castile have the advantage right now. Unless they're all the way over here. No, that's just the Venetian. And we're going to have lots of engagement. So the Portuguese cavalry all been killed. It looks like it. Which gives the Castilians a great chance to maybe make an, a, you know, make a push. in the, Now the, the battle lines are starting to uh, be created. As we, we have some of the Venetians coming over to support them. As they do actually take on the general's bodyguard. Wow. Of the Toulouse. Force. And the Toulouse are going to be getting surrounded. The Venetian cavalry is going to get surrounded by the Toulouse spearmen who are now making their way into the back and engaging these. Now, obviously, this, this, this Venetian cavalry isn't going to go down quickly, but it's going to you know, eventually start getting picked away, especially against you know, the general's bodyguard, which is a very good unit. So these guys are going to be taking them down. And I don't know, this is for, for what I thought was going to be a really clean victory for the Portuguese and Venetians turning on its head and as you can see a bounce of power is kind of shifting away from them. Venice looked like they are breaking the Toulousean front line. But at what cost? At what cost? Because now the Castile have thrown in their elite infantry. You can see they're breaking these Portuguese spearmen at every single turn. Because, you know, these Portuguese knights are going to be no match for these, you know, two-hand greatsword, halberds, warhammer, Castilian infantry. And you can see they're just cutting down the Portuguese knights. So they're trying their best, but they just don't really have the, uh, the manpower or the quality to really break down. The Portuguese, though, putting up a great fight over here. But again, we have some great pikemen moving in. And, you know, it's very... Very interesting in these medieval battles because you start to see a few pikes and halberdiers making their way in. But the fact that the Castilians have managed to get their pikemen in this battle is huge because it means they haven't been shot by missiles. And pikemen and halberds are like unbeatable from the front. One rear charge from cavalry and they're probably all going to die. But, you know, from the front, they're like impenetrable. And the fact that the Castilians have managed to break them units in have been great. The Portuguese, though, not going down without a fight, though, as their, you know, front line and their spears are doing a great job against the Castilians. What a massacre right now. Look at the bodies just piling up on the battlefield. Absolutely carnage right now. The Venetians, though, over on the left-hand side, seem like they've kind of got things under control as they maneuver around and try and clear up what remains of Toulouse. I think Toulouse maybe committed a few too many of their horses over to the center. Um, however, they still got some really good men left, so maybe they can reform up, fight their way out of this scenario. And again, I love the look of the Toulousean heavy infantry. They look clean as hell. Very, very nice looking uniforms and armor. I mean, look, they just got like huge weapons. Really cool. Venetian, so trying to surround them and just clear this up so they can help their Portuguese ally. Um, the band's power is now dramatically shifted in favor of the Venetians and the Portuguese. That is pretty goddamn crazy right there. Yeah, it looks like it's all going down. The right flank has kind of crumbled for Castile. Cavalry is still alive, though. However, we are going to be having the king's bodyguard. Wow, the king of Portugal himself leading the men. And he's going to be getting chased off by the king of Spain. Wow, or uh, Castile, I should say. That's pretty crazy. A rear charge right here could have been good to break these dismounted knights. We're seeing, though, the majority of the men going down. I imagine that is the Toulouse general going down. Yeah, I think that would be the Toulouse general being slain. Yeah, right here we can see him. Yeah, he has been killed now and he's fleeing. The Duke of Toulouse has been slain. What will the French think of that? And now I think it's just clean up on aisle four. As the entire yeah, the entire Toulouse army breaks seeing their king slain and they are fleeing to the mountains and what is left of the Venetians are now making their way over. It's not like the Venetians really have like a million men left. They are down to a couple thousand. Let's 
see the fight continuing on steel with their dismounted knights putting up their last epic stand right here. And we'll just sit back and watch it. Enjoy the last couple minutes as Castile fight as hard as they physically can. Try and take down as many Portuguese. But what will this mean now that the Portuguese and Venetians have claimed victory? It seems like the Mediterranean is maybe going to fall in control of the Venetians and push their expansion elsewhere. Obviously, Venice being a, a very, very profitable uh, republic Hopefully, maybe this will fund their wars, you know, in in the Balkans, you know, in maybe Greece. Maybe they'll look to take colonies, you know, along the coast. Maybe try and take Gibraltar for themselves. Even though probably Granada at this time period had Gibraltar. Did they buy or did Castile hold it? I mean, obviously, Gibraltar wasn't as huge of an importance back at this time period as it was, say, maybe in the uh, 17, 1800s when you had a lot of the New World trade, but I mean, it's them, obviously, the, the Suez Canal as well. But it was still, obviously, extremely important. Because, obviously, a lot of the trade had to go around the Horn of Africa rather than through the Suez and, uh, you know, through the uh, through Gibraltar. So do we have the entire Venetian army? Yeah, the entire Venetian army. Look, it's just forming up and watching this fight. To be fair, though, Castile have a couple men left here and there. And they're trying to take down as many of these guys as possible. Um, that's brutal. Something I would love to see in a 12-12 battle is a really dense formation so instead of having these really like i mean to be fair this battle had three men deep but imagine the same battle and we just have like six or seven ranks deep how cool would that be where there is a lot of space around the flanks um so instead of you know these really long battles we have a really condensed battle i think that'd be really cool to see and something you know very very different again right here we have uh, uh the brave castilians i don't know how they haven't routed yet As you can just see the Venetians. I'd like to think the Castilians just can't see the banners at this distance. And they're like, have our, have our Toulousian allies won? Are they coming to aid us? And that's why they're still standing. But little do they know, as soon as they get you know, in range, the banners will show. And they will see that their, their fate is soon to be met. A sad day indeed for Castile, but a very, very awesome battle. So massive shout out to the guy who sent this to me over on my Discord. I really appreciate it. And if you guys have any cool 12-12 battles, rise and Mordor battles, be sure to throw them my way. So yeah, this battle is over. We'll skip ahead to the uh, final uh, screens so we can see if you know what units really racked up the most kills. As you know, Castile do just break from the battle. They have what one unit of heavy knights, which are going to be completely surrounded. We have cavalry coming in from every single side. Oh, what? are they actually going to just completely surround it? Let the cavalry do the job. Oh, this is going to be brutal. We're going to charge in, looking to you know not just sit there and get hit to pieces. And that cavalry charge was not as effective due to them charging deep into the ranks. But did you see how many guys went down there? Wow, that was brutal. Absolutely brutal. And there we have it. The battle is over. That's going to be all she wrote for the Alliance. And a Pyrrhic victory for Castile and for Portugal, I should say, and Venice. Uh, very, very hard fought indeed on both sides. And look at them losses. I mean, losses-wise, it's not like well, the Portuguese lost basically just as many as Castile and Toulouse in that engagement. The Venetians, um, I imagine, hiring plenty of mercenaries, managing to hold their own and not lose as many men. So we take a look at the kills. We'll start off with Portugal. Uh, their front line, the Spanish Order Foot Knights, over 300 kills, not too bad. And the crossbows as well from Genoa, paying for themselves along with their Portuguese knights as well. Not bad. Over on Castile, their general, the King's Bodyguard, getting 360. 66 kills that is crazy good and we also have 300 kills over on the spanish order knights very impressive then if we take a look at venice we can see again their foot infantry over 300 kills um, and even their normal front lines these fantir de mar doing nice and 361 kills that might be the most no the, the spanish bodyguard regaining that title of most kills so far 
Then finally, if we look at Toulouse, again, they have like these heavy infantry, 200 kills on this one, 144 on the Count Bodyguard, and 222 on this Cavalryman. So overall, a very, very awesome battle. The Spanish King proving himself as the MVP, most kills on the battlefield. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to drop a like and a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.